Ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting our webinar shortly. Before we begin, kindly turn off your microphone to avoid any interruption. Please use the chat box for any questions. Thank you for your cooperation. Para hadirin sekalian, webinar kita akan bermula sebentar lagi. Sila tutup mikrofon anda untuk mengelakkan sebarang gangguan. Sila gunakan chat box sekiranya ada soalan. Terima kasih atas kerjasama anda. Melati kuntum tumbuh melata. Sayang merbah di pohon cemara. Salam sejahtera mulanya kata. Saya sembah pembuka bicara. A very good morning to our distinguished guests, the Honorable Principals of SMK Anderson and SMK Dato' Haji Abdul Wahab, Mr. Wan Shaiful Akmar bin Muhammad Idris and Mr. Lutfi bin Muhammad Nur. The cellular speaker, Mrs. Fazira Suryani binti Muhammad Fazil from Industrial Center of Innovation in Nanotechnology, Sirim Berhad. The hardworking advisors, Mrs. Noriza binti Awang, Mrs. Nurul Zuraini binti Zulifli, Mrs. Aini Rashida binti Ahmad Zuhairi, Mrs. Nurul Ain Dainat. Administrators, teachers of all states and my fellow friends. I'm Shamita Ganesan and I will be a host for today. On behalf of the committee members, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all of you to the Kami Talk Series 3, The Beauty of Nanotechnology. We appreciate you for taking some time off to join us today. We hope that you will learn a lot by the end of this webinar. Dengan ini, Majlis menjemput Saudara Ali Imran untuk memimpin bacaan doa. Majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajmain. Ya Karim ya Wadud. Sesungguhnya kami berhimpun pada hari ini bagi menyatakan kesyukuran di atas kurniaanmu yang tidak ternilai. Jadikanlah kami hamba-hambamu yang sentiasa bersyukur sama ada nikmat yang sedikit lebih-lebih lagi nikmat yang melimpah ruah kepada kami. Ya Allah ya Rahman ya Rahim, engkau berkatilah dan rahmatilah perjalanan majlis pada hari ini. Sesungguhnya engkau Maha mengetahui bahawa kami di sini ingin menimba ilmu-Mu yang sangat luas bagi mengembangkan potensi kami sebagai hamba-Mu yang engkau redai. Justeru berkati dan rahmatilah perhimpunan kami ini. Kurniakanlah kepada kami Gunakanlah kepada kami ilmu-mu, sinarilah hati-hati kami dengan cahaya dan hidayah-mu. Semoga dengannya kami mudah menerima dan menghayati serta mengamalkannya. Ya Zal Jalal Iwal Ikram. Semoga dengannya kami mampu menemani cabaran, berdaya saing dan mampu mengangkat martabat diri, keluarga, masyarakat dan negara. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasanah wa fil akhirati hasanah wa kina azaban nar. Assalamualaikum ala sayidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Terima kasih saudara Ali Imran atas bacaan doa itu tadi Now our moderator Mirtani will take the stage. Hello students, how are you? I'm Mirtani Ravindran and I be your moderator for today. The title for today would be The Beauty of Nanotechnology from Chapter 5. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, please welcome our speaker, Mrs. Fazira Suryani Binti Mohammad Fazil from Industrial Center of Innovation, Nanotechnology, Sirim Berhad. Before we move on, let's get to know our speaker better. Mrs. Fadira Suryani was born in 29 August 1979 and her age now is 42. She finished her SPM at SM Science Sultan Muhammad Jiwa, Sungai Petani in 1996 and continued B.E. Horns in Chemical Engineering at UTP Trono 
in 2003. In 2007, she completed MSc in Chemical Engineering. She was qualified as Graduate Engineer since 2009 and Graduate Technologist since 2019. I have to say, from 2003 to 2007, she was a graduated assistant as lab demonstrator in University Technology, Petronas. From 2008 to 2013, Mrs. Fazira was elected as a researcher, Structure Materials Program, Sirim Berhad. And from 2014 to 2016, she was a researcher in Engineering Section, Sirim Berhad. Now, she is elected as a researcher, ICI, Nanotechnology, Sirim Berhad. Now, I invite Mrs. Fazira to start her speech. Hello, good morning. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, Ms. Murtini and also Ms. Shamita. Uh, saya juga nak ucapkan uh, terima kasih kepada Puan Nurul Zuraini yang uh, invite saya untuk buat sharing pada pagi ni. So, um, kalau ada apa-apa soalan nanti boleh uh, boleh raise your hand je lah atau tanya dekat chat box semasa panjang sepanjang presentation nanti. So, saya share saya punya slide ah. Boleh dengar suara saya clear? Okey, dengar dengar. Sara, uh, kamera tu turun tak nampak muka, nampak muka kat atas. <laughs> Okey. <laughs> Okey dah. Nampak nano je tadi. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Nampak dah buka ha? <laughs> Okay So Bismillahirrahmanirrahim um, This is the slide I prepared for this Kemi Talk uh, Program Collaboration of Pantakima SMK Anderson and SMK Datuk Haji Abdul Wahab and Penerusani also mentioned they are also uh, participation from other schools um, dari seluruh negeri Perak. So, selamat datang ke talk pada hari ini. So, uh, this is the third series as mentioned. Uh, the title is The Beauty of Nanotechnology. And I am Fazira Mohd Fazir from ICI Nanotechnology, Sirim uh, Industrial Research. Uh, we are, uh, my office, uh, currently is at home, so because we are working uh, at home. Uh, our uh, office is in um, Kulim, Kulim High Tech. Uh, the HQ is in Sha'alam. Okay, uh, uh, quiz time, but this is, uh, ni macam uh, nak minta standby je lah sebab nanti ada quiz, simple-simple quiz je untuk students. So nanti standby untuk buka kahoot www.kahoot.it later in in the uh, talk nanti. Okay, so before we go further, uh, I would like to share with you the definition of uh, these three terms. Uh, the first one is nanoscience. So nanoscience is the study on processing of substances uh, at nanoscale. Uh, and then uh, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is the development of substances or gadgets or, or it's called also uh, engineering using the properties of nanoparticles. And the third term is nanoparticle. Nanoparti uh, nanoparticle are the particle with the size between 1 to 100 nanometer. 1 nanometer is equal to 10 to minus 9 meter. So, macam mana kita nak bayangkan saiz uh, nanometer ni? Um, so, these are the chart for nano size comparison. So, kalau manusia, uh, kita measure dalam meter kan? And then, millimeter, micrometer dan nanometer. So, uh, meter, uh, millimeter is minus 3, micrometer is minus 6 
uh, nanometer is minus 9. So uh, apa yang ada dekat dalam nanometer ni biasanya memang tak nampaklah dengan mata kasar. So dia memerlukan uh, alat untuk uh, nak melihatlah sebab um, dan memang engineering um, development uh, di seluruh dunia lah uh, memang dah sampai ke nanometer punya uh, study sebab dia dah boleh buat mesin-mesin uh, yang boleh uh, tengok uh, material and nanoscale sebab tu ada um, apa nama um, application yang menggunakan nanoteknologi so antaranya adalah transistor dan juga carbon nanotube so nanti later in this presentation I will share more with you uh, about the application uh, in the nanotechnology Okay, so how small is small? Uh, this is to compare uh, nano size particle with uh, other material. Uh, water, or water is the smallest, and then uh, glucose, antibody, virus, bacterium, cancer cell, uh, a period. Ni titik nota lah yang selalu kita, bila kita tulis kan, uh, titik nota size ni, nano tu uh, lagi kecil lah daripada tu. And then uh, compared to a tennis ball. Okay. So, uh, apa application? What are the application of nanotechnology in uh, the daily life? There are several uh, application. Uh, tapi yang ni yang the main application yang biasanya digunakan. So, the first one is uh, in superconductor and electronics. So, uh, dia dapat menghasilkan smaller and more efficient semiconductor and also high conductivity wiring system. Okay. Uh, in textile, it can produce uh, water, fire, dirt and resist, uh, water, fire and dirt resistant fabrics and also anti-wrinkles and UV protective fabrics. In agriculture, uh, boleh, boleh buat uh, effective pesticide and also efficient fertilization. Um, in energy and electricity, smaller and more efficient solar cells. So, can produce also long lasting batteries. In the medical area, uh, high sensitive testing devices and also more efficient drug delivery system. Okay, uh, drug delivery uh, drug delivery system ni bukan uh, drug delivery system ni adalah dalam badan kita sebab macam contoh uh, sakit kanser atau biasanya sakit kanser yang memerlukan rawatan direct kepada bahagian yang kena kanser. So how uh, dia nak bawakan ubat tu terus dekat part yang kena kanser tu ialah dia ke, dia pakai uh, drug delivery system lah. So, bila dia apply this nanotechnology, uh, lebih senang untuk menyampaikan ubat dekat kawasan yang kita nak sampaikan tu. Okay, and then uh, in food uh, area, um, nanotechnology ni boleh hasilkan nanoscale food additive dan juga antimicrobial food packaging. Antimicrobial ni uh, yang um, sebab food packaging ni kan Uh, kalau kita tak uh, jaga betul-betul dia boleh uh, menyebabkan makanan kita mungkin dihinggapi oleh bakteria jadi uh, ada teknologi untuk uh, dibuat coating dekat food packaging tu so uh, untuk mengelakkan mikro untuk mengelakkan mikro daripada uh, naik dekat uh, packaging tu so food kita akan uh, jadi lebih selamat okey Okay, quiz time. Cepat nak quiz eh. Okay ke semua? Ke semua bela-bela lagi? Sekejap lah. Hmm, saya share quiz punya soalan. Semua boleh buka kahut www.kahut.it
Boleh dengar tak? Boleh, boleh. Sekejap, nampak tak? Okey, nampak. Nampak yang soalan kuis tu ke? Quiz kuis tu ke? Nampak waiting for teams. Ah, okey. So, uh, boleh masukkan hudak IT dan masukkan game P ni. 10224102295. So, nanti dia akan tengoklah siapa yang nak join kuis. Okey. Perlu ada seorang. Ada lagi nak join? Sepuluh orang. Okay, bagi dalam setengah minit lagi untuk siapa-siapa lagi nak join. Kalau tak ada kita boleh start eh. Ya, yeah, kita start. Okay, soalan satu. What is nanotechnology? So, pilih yang merah ataupun yang biru. Sekejap lah. Sekejap saat lagi. Ah, ada yang tak sempat jawab. Okey, 29 jawab yang merah, 15 jawab yang biru. So jawapan dia, yang merah ni, yang merah ni lah. So nanotechnology is the development of substance using the properties of nanoparticles. Okay. Yang the study on processing on substance at nanoscale ni ialah nanoscience. Okay. Next question. Ready? Oh, ni result. So yang dapat jawab paling cepat tadi si Purani. Congratulations. So yang lain ni yang top five lah. You may ni Shamita, Shina dengan HMM. <laughs> Okay, lima orang. Alright, next question. True or false? Nanoscience is the study on processing of substances at nanoscale. From the side. Semua boleh jawab. Oh, ada lagi yang tak jawab. Okay. 
masa tamat. So, jawapan true. Nanoscience is the study on processing of substances at nanoscale. Oh, si Bupura ni juga nombor satu. Okay. And then, uh, next question, last question, tiga soalan je. Okay, one nanometer is 20 saat. Okay, 34 orang jawab betul, uh, 1 nanometer is 10 to power of 9 meter. Okay, uh, 10 to power of minus 6 is micrometer, 10 to power of 3 is uh, millimeter, 10 to power of minus 12 is uh, picometer. So, pemenangnya ialah, nombor 3 you may. Nombor dua, HMM. Dan nombor satu, Tiba Purani, Tania. Okay. Okay, eh, tak lah. <laughs> tak mustok pula bunyi lah. Okay. Alright. So, uh, buat quiz bagi semua orang bangun pagi um, cerah mata sikit lah kan. So, tak adalah tunggu-tunggu je. Alright, kita sambung. So, um, tadi ada mention saya um, daripada ICI Nanotechnology. So saya nak share sikit apa yang kita buat dekat ICI Nanotechnology tu. Dekat office tu. So saya bawakan satu video lah. Tak dengar suara Sarah. Oh. Tak dengar langsung dia? Haa, ah, tak dengar. Tak dengar langsung. Hmm, macam mana? Tak dengar, dia cakap seorang-seorang. Ha? Video tu sengap, dia cakap seorang-seorang. <laughs> oh, tapi kat sini ada. Macam nak buat tu? Tak ada lah, tak ada, tak ada seorang langsung. Okay, cuba try lagi. Cuba retry. Tak ada lah. Hmm, slide tak, tak, tak ada. Kita share video dia lah. Sekejap lah. Boleh nampak ah? 
Boleh nampak tak? Screen. Nampak tak screen saya share? Tak ada sharing. Tak ada sharing. Okay. Okay. Boleh dengar ke muzik dia? Ah uh, tak ada, tak ada, tak ada muzik. Hmm. Tak <laughs> ada, macam ada. Tak ada Puan Fazira. Uh, kalau dekat laptop Puan ada tak suara uh, bunyi? Ada keluar tak suara? Ada bunyi. Hmm. Mungkin sebab dia tak direct connect dengan speak dengan apa? Speak dengan apa? Sound ni kan? Apa-apa tengok gambar dulu? Alright, tengok gambar je dulu. Okay, sorry ya, eh. ada glitch pasal sound pula <laughs> sebab tak ada mikrofon. Um, kejap saya share balik slide tadi. Window. Share. Okay, um, basically um, tadi uh, saya punya director dia explain pasal apa yang kita buat dekat uh, ICI Nano Technology so location dekat Sirim Kulim um, So kita ada buat friction material untuk brake pad untuk LRT. Lepas tu kita ada juga buat cutting tools untuk in, uh, buat insert untuk cutting tools. Uh, kita juga ada buat nano coating uh, untuk medical application. Uh, lepas tu untuk ceramic kita ada juga buat uh, membrane untuk water filtration system. Selain pada tu uh, kita juga ada uh, buat uh, CNT, carbon nanotube dan juga graphene untuk low pressure tank. So uh, besides that, we also uh, buat fabrication untuk water filtration system untuk community dan juga untuk industri. Then kita ada buat nano safety testing ni dengan consultation juga uh, sebab kita ada uh, dia punya characterization punya uh, Uh, alat lah dekat ni, ha, ni antara ni anak FISM ni yang kat belakang Dr. Razi ni nama dia uh, X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy nanti saya akan share detail lagi uh, mesin yang available okay okay ni contoh um, untuk nano characterization kita ada nano particle analyzer uh, this nano particle analyzer provides a combination of particle size analyzer Zeta Potential Analyzer, Molecular Weight Analyzer and also Protein Mobility and uh, Microreology Measurement. So this is a perfect system to measure the particle and molecule fr uh, from less than a nanometer in size to several microns. Uh, particle Analyzer is equipped with an auto titrator 
for faster and better automation of routine measurement of dispersed particle and molecules. And then the next um, equipment that we have is the MML nano test. Uh, this is a system uh, fully flexible for nano mechanical property uh, measurement system. Uh, offering a complete range of nanomechanical and nano tribological tests, including nano indentation, nano scratch uh, measurement. So, among the parameters, nano test is capable to measure hardness, uh, modulus, modulus, uh, toughness, addition, and many uh, other properties uh, of thin films and also other surfaces or solids. Then we have the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. Uh, this equipment is a very powerful tool for quantitative determination of chemicals, including surface nanostructure of solid surfaces. Uh, it is able to precisely determine the properties such as oxidation degree and crystallization state of specific elements of the materials. And SPS can also be used in nanocrystallization of core and shell of the CS nanoparticle, carbon sulfur nanoparticles. Uh, next is the atomic force microscopy. Is the, uh, it is a technique for imaging, measuring and analyzing the surface of rigid materials at nanoscale. Uh, it can map the topography and produces 3D images uh, of the surface. Uh, we also have uh, equipment uh, to do for nano coating, we have the nano coating facilities, which are the radio frequency sputtering, chemical vapor deposition, and also physical vapor deposition. Uh, nano coatings are one of the most important topics within the range of nanotechnology. So we, uh, these machines are available uh, to fabrication of reference material and functional layers. Uh, depending on application and requirements, such as techniques, can be used to create nano layer and also nano structure deposit. Okay. Uh, then uh, thickness of the transparent layer and of uh, and nano coatings are hard to be measured. Sebab dia nano kan nipis sangat. So, uh, kalau pakai microscopy biasa sama ada uh, SEM atau TEM, uh, uh, SEM atau mikroskop yang uh, light mikroskopi yang biasa kita tak dapat tengok. Jadi kita boleh antara mesin kita boleh gunakan ialah spectral refraction system untuk measure the thickness of the uh, layer of nano coatings. Okay, uh, next uh, equipment yang ada ialah transmission electron microscopy atau TEM. TEM ni alat yang saya jaga lah. Dekat ICI Nanotechnology tu, there are only two person in charge uh, to uh, handle the machine. Uh, one of them is me. So this is a microscopy technique in which uh, a beam of electrons is transmitted through a specimen to form an image. The specimen is most often an ultra-thin section, less than 100 nanometer thick or a suspension on a grid. Okay, so kalau kita tengok dia tinggi macam ni, uh, yang dekat atas ni dia punya source of electrons lah, dia punya beam. Uh, lepas tu uh, kita akan masukkan sampel dekat bahagian tengah ni, in the middle. Then uh, bila beam tu pass through the, transmitted through the uh, specimen, uh, it will form an image dekat uh, bawah ni. So image ni ada kamera kat bawah ni akan transfer dekat um, uh, PC untuk kita view dekat uh, monitor ni lah. So kita boleh save image tu. Uh, nanti saya share contoh-contoh uh, image yang kita nampak daripada TEM ni. Okay. So contoh sampel yang saya pernah terima adalah graphene. So this is how graphene looks like under TEM. So graphene is basically an electrode of carbon consisting of single layer of atoms arranged in two dimensional honeycomb lattice. Uh, dia carbon lah, carbon satu layer. Uh, so nampak kan dia macam uh, kepingan kertas yang sangat nipis. Uh, kat bawah TEM kita boleh nampak lah. Actually uh, TEM ni dia boleh pergi sampai 1 million 
uh, magnification tapi biasanya image tak berapa clear sebab ada uh, noise uh, jadi kadang-kadang uh, bila dekat higher magnification ni kita boleh nampak uh, the fringes dia punya susunan lattice so bila kita measure dia punya despacing tu despacing tu kita memang akan dapat 0.142 kalau memang Uh, material tu adalah carbon uh, graphene ni memang jarak dia 0.142 jadi bila kita measure tu akan dapat size tu ok uh, what are the properties of graphene so graphene are strong and hard transparent uh, it, is a, it has a good conductive of heat and electricity impermeable very low electrical resistance and also very elastic Okay. <coughs> so dengan properties yang dia ada ni uh, Apakah kegunaan grafin uh, Ada enam uh, major uh, uses of grafin Includes the electronics, sensors, biomedical, polymer and composite Membrane and also untuk energy So electronics, uh, arrangement of atoms in grafin uh, <coughs> the arrangement uh, allows it to be a very superior conductor sebab susunan dia kan sama sekata macam tu and then in sensors, graphene has very high surface area so it will be, be a very good sensor <coughs> sorry batuk um, and then in biomedical, in tissue engineering and also, and also the uh, medicine or drug delivery system uh, polymer and composite because of it, uh, its high mechanical strength is very suitable for uh, to be used as uh, polymer composite material and as mentioned by uh, the director bef my director before uh, we have uh, graphene to be used in our low pressure gas tank and then for membrane for uh, water filtration system uh, energy uh, graphene can be used to produce batteries that last longer flexible and strong and also as super capacitor okay Uh, this one is carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube ni dia silinders of one or more layers of graphene. So uh, yang ni pun sampel yang saya dapat daripada customer luar. Saya tak tak, tak ingat siapa dia punya ni. Dan kalau tak silap saya application dia adalah untuk electronics juga. Sama macam graphene tadi. Macam dia ada buat development of uh, graphene dan juga development of CNT dan dia akan gunakan benda uh, menggunakan material untuk uh, electronics application so macam yang ni kalau kita nampak macam ada something dekat tengah ni dia buat doping untuk increase the properties of the CNT untuk digunakan sebagai uh, electronic and electrical uh, application ok satu lagi saya nak share ialah gold uh, macam tak nampak <laughs> So gold nanoparticle pun digunakan untuk electrical electronic um, uh, application. So kalau tengok kat sini saiz yang ada ni semua bawah 10 nano lah dalam 3 ke 4 nano saja. So uh, ni antara sampel yang saya dapat lah. Ada banyak lagi sampel tapi ni yang saya nak share. Okay. So um, selain daripada characterization dan juga um, Equipment yang kita ada tadi tu, uh, ICI Nanotechnology juga ada buat uh, nanotech project uh, Ayat Nano dekat Semesti, Semesti kat Perak lah kan dekat Teluk Intan So projek ni basically apa yang nano ni ialah kita menggunakan membrane filtration system yang ada nano filtration lah So uh, projek dah siap uh, in 2019 uh, Ni pun ada video tapi tak boleh nak dengar pula suara dia nanti kan. Uh, so saya share sikit lah uh, apa yang dia mention. Sekejap. Uh, kita buat sistem ra rawatan air payau dekat semesti. Dia adalah satu projek. Uh, antara Sirim dengan Semesti dan juga dengan JMG, Jabatan Minyak dan Galian. So, Semesti ada satu uh, tip well uh, tapi tak boleh direct guna sebab air tu terlalu kasar lah sebab kan, terlalu kasar. So, kena soften 
before it can be use as drinking water ataupun air untuk penggunaan harian lah. So, hmm, dia kita gunakan ah, ni lah, filter ni untuk merawat air. So, uh, sebab kan dekat asrama kan uh, ram, ramai student kan. Sebelum ni lah sebab sekarang kan sebab cuti. Tapi sebelum ni adalah ramai student so Uh, boleh gunakan air yang kita hasilkan ni lah Ok next Ok apa? Uh, what is nanofiltration? Nanofiltration is relatively recent membrane filtration process used most often with low total dissolved solid water such as surface water and fresh ground water so the purpose to soften, softening and removal of disinfection by product precursor such as natural organic matter and synthetic organic matter. Okay, uh, so typical application of this nano filtration uh, membrane system termasuk uh, removal of color and total organic carbon TOC from surface water and the removal of hardness of radium from well water and overall reduction of total dissolved solid and separation of organic from inorganic matter in specialty food and wastewater application. So selain daripada kita buat mm, develop system untuk uh, community use lah tadi tu kan dekat sekolah untuk semesti kita juga ada buat satu sistem yang digunakan oleh beberapa buah kilang um, de, uh, kilang makanan lah kilang, uh, salah satu kilang tu dekat Perak satu dekat Kedah dan satu lagi dekat Kelantan. Tiga negeri. Kilang buat uh, kicap dan sos. Okay. So uh, digunakan, uh, bila digunakan nano filtered um, water ni, produk dia tahan lebih lama dan uh, air, uh, sebab dia RO sistem dia ada reject water. So reject water tu dia boleh gunakan untuk cuci uh, kilang lepas dah buat production dia boleh gunakan air tu untuk cuci kilang tu so tak ada air yang wasted lah so ni uh, ayat nano dekat semesti so student boleh direct ambil untuk minum bawa, bawa botol lah senang kan bawa gelas pun boleh so minum kat situ ataupun bawa botol dan bawa balik ke asrama so location dia dekat sebelah dengan surau so air tu pun digunakan di surau juga satu lagi nanoteknologi adalah dalam bidang kosmetik uh, Puan Nur Zaini ada mention untuk saya cerita sikit pasal kosmetik So dekat um, Sirim Ada juga satu lagi centre yang, yang dinamakan Industrial Biotechnology Research Centre uh, Dia dekat Shah Alam So um, uh, Yang berkaitan dengan nano research di situ ialah tentang nano, nano emulsion Emotion ni dia proses uh, water uh, dan campuran mix of water and oil to produce uh, emulsion. So uh, detail of the project saya tak boleh nak reveal tapi basically ni dia punya dia punya basic understanding lah kan. So dia akan mengasih dia ada campur sikit uh, apa nama ada dia punya resepi dia untuk menghasilkan nano emulsion tu and then uh, nano emulsion is preferable because it will uh, easily absorb into the skin so nano emulsion ni digunakan untuk skin care product development okay uh, buat masa ni uh, sirim tak ada buat uh, nano emulsion based uh, skin care lagi uh, formulation uh, ada supply lah untuk uh, manufacturer yang memerlukan uh, formulation tersebut tapi uh, saya nak share ada satu produk yang Sirim buat di IBRC ni uh, nama dia Ensutash dia uh, based on the NAS uh, tapi yang ni dia tak highlight on the nano emulsion itself so just uh, cosmetic, uh, just uh, skincare set yang dihasilkan oleh researcher di uh, IBRC Sirim Okay. Then uh, selain daripada tu kita juga ada buat cosmetic safety studies 
Sebenarnya dia bukan je lah kosmet- untuk kosmetik Safety study ni dia apa-apa saja um, Apa-apa saja produk uh, Yang kita nak tengok dia selamat ke tak uh, Untuk environment So kita ada satu section, satu center yang dinamakan Environmental Technology Research Center So dekat situ antara test uh, untuk safety study Dia ada buat toxicology study Uh, toxicology study ni uh, dia macam safety assessment lah for uh, ataupun toxicity testing it is a process uh, of determining the degree to which a substance of interest negatively impact the normal biological function of an organism so uh, dia, dia ada standard dia lah yang diikut hmm, macam dia test uh, bahan tu dia letak dekat certain exposure duration dia set time lah time tu how dia dia punya exposure dengan concentration of the substance nak tengok dia ada negative impact tak terhadap biological function of an organism so antara test yang dibuat ialah acute dermal, acute oral, eye irritation, uh, skin irritation dan juga skin corrosion okay uh, and then dia juga ada buat uh, test uh, is it safe for our environment kita nak tengok, uh, dia ada test yang terlibat ialah fish uh, fish toxicology test and juga algae growth. So, it is, it is to determine whether the substance is hazardous or not to the aquatic environment. So, sebab uh, lepas kita pakai kosmetik, uh, contoh lah kan, kita pakai dan kita basuh, kan masuk dalam kita punya apa singki, buang, masuk dalam kita punya sistem kubahan semua kan dan dibuang. So, uh, benda nano, dia, bila dia dikira nano ni, uh, kadang-kadang bukan nano pun. Tapi, um, mungkin dia nano structured yang kecil lah kan. So, kita nak tengok. Uh, kita ada buat test sama ada produk tu selamat tak bila dia release dekat environment, selamat atau, atau tidak terhadap environment kita. Dia memberi kesan tak dekat aquatic environment. Okay. Oh, quiz lagi. Quiz nombor dua tu. Quiz nombor satu pula. Okay, ready untuk quiz. Saya share. Page untuk quiz. Lagi satu quiz. <laughs> Kejap uh, yeah. Sekejap sekali loading Okay, boleh nampak ah? Okay, boleh. Okay. Okay. 
Kita boleh start eh? Dah. Kita lagi masuk. Oh ramai dari tadi. Okay ni part tu punya quiz. Kita mula eh? Bismillah. Which are the correct properties of graphene? Okay, two plus one. Okay, so tiga jawapan yang betul. So jawab salah satu tu antara tiga ni betul. So very high resistance ni uh, dia very low resistance. So graphene uh, strong and hard, very good conductive, very uh, low resistance and also elastic. Okay, so tengok siapa yang jawab paling cepat sebab tiga, tiga yang betul kan. Okay, Tania, Lewin. Okay, next question. Oh, ni sama ni. Yumi ni pun markah sama juga. 979. Okay. Next. True or false. Graphene is an electrode of carbon with a single layer of atoms arranged in a three-dimensional honeycomb lattice. True or false. Jawapan dia false. 10 orang je betul. So dia punya ni graphene is an electrode of carbon with a single layer of atoms arranged in a two dimensional honeycomb lattice bukan three. Sebab dia kan sekeping macam tu je kan two dimensional. Okay. So yang betul carbon. Alright. Next question. Macam soalan betul-betul. <laughs> Graphene can be used in the application of 2 saat. Okay, betul. Semua jawapan pun betul. Dronics boleh, biomedical boleh, polymer composite boleh, membrane pun boleh. Empat-empat jawapan betul. Dan maka yang tinggi akan mendapatkan siapa jawab paling cepat lah. So, nombor tiga. Congratulations, Liang. Betul, Diren. Yang nombor one convent. Okay, congratulations. Right. Okay. Sat uh, ada satu lagi yang saya nak share, nak tengok. Uh, kejap lah. Eh. Boleh pula tak kenapa Okay uh, 
Boleh buka satu lagi website www.menti.com Boleh tak? Kita try tengok menti.com Dan masukkan kod Saya try juga enam lapan tiga kosong kosong tujuh dua sembilan oh dah dia tak tukar soalan ok ok um, boleh masuk ke? <tuh> tahu yang masukkan nama saya <tuh> Nak kena masukkan uh, tiga perkataan uh, yang you uh, dapat daripada talk hari ni. Tiga perkataan. <laughs> Boleh share ke? Eh, semua masukkan nama. <laughs> Please uh, conclude three words uh, from the talk today. Any three words yang you boleh ingat lah daripada perkataan daripada talk hari ni. Okay so perkataan yang paling besar sekarang grafin So maksudnya ramai orang yang bagi input grafin Then nanotechnology dan juga nanoscience So ada juga yang mention cosmetic, nanofiltration Uh, gold, electronics, carbon electrode semua ada. Okay, negatif sembilan pun ada. Okay, so saya saya takat tu saja saya punya sharing. Uh, pada hari ini, uh, kalau ada apa-apa soalan, uh, boleh tanya. Thank you very much. Thank you Mrs. Fazira for the mind-blowing webinar today. So now, for the question and answer session, we are opening questions to the member of the floor. Participants are given 10 minutes time to ask any topic-related questions in the chat box. While waiting for others, Mrs. Fazira, I have a personal question. What was your inspiration to choose this profession? Oh, uh, I <laughs> inspiration. Eh? Um, firstly, uh, I was a graduate in chemical engineering, and back then, um, in two thousand eight, after I graduated in two thousand seven. Um, simply just it's because uh, the center is uh, is a research center so having done my master's in research so I like research and my interest is so much into research so I joined the company then mula-mula satu project je as a contract, subcontract staff and then uh, ada rezeki dapat masuk as permanent staff and then involved in more research work. Macam itulah Nifah. Question number two. Nanotechnology is used in therapeutic drug delivery. Drugs only can be consumed with the doctor's prescription. 
how can we prevent illegal consumption prevent illegal consumption mm saya nak cakap ah kena ada apa nama um, undang-undang je lah kan yang boleh ni tapi kita nak halang orang pun tak boleh sebab tu masing-masing punya pilihan kan tapi undang-undang Malaysia kan dah ada tentang penyalahgunaan dada ni so anything boleh refer dengan tu lah saya rasa What is the difference between normal cosmetics and cosmetics produced from nanoparticles? Ah, as mentioned before, um, if you use nano uh, particles to produce um, cosmetic or, or skincare products, uh, it will be easier to uh, absorb and it will cover um, most of your skin. Skin ni lah sebab bila halus, when it's very uh, small size, uh, it, macam lebih sekata lah dia punya um, penggunaan dekat you punya face tu lebih sekata. I have collected some of the questions from participants today. Here are some of them, Mrs. Fazira. Okay. Uh, from Kavitra Krishnan, what are the ethical issues of nanotechnology? ethical issues um ethical issues um apa <laughs> um, nak contoh ke you mean nak ada contoh pun um okay ah uh, Nano technology is uh, macam adalah teknologi yang agak advance dekat Malaysia ni macam uh, kalau you are into the industry uh, anybody who uh, uh, able to uh, produce or to um, generate uh, nano technology materials or nano technology particles nano materials or nano particles um, biasanya dia punya uh, saham akan naik maksudnya industry are very into this nanotechnology things but then sometimes uh, some people misuse the word nano nano material or nanotechnology then they declare and they say that the material or particle is nano but then it is not so there are some of the issues in nanotechnology ethical issues okay this question is from Bishantani Parameswaran Does the graphene can decompose? Please explain about it. Uh, graphene ni dia kan uh, carbon layer. Oh, carbon. So kalau ni nak decompose pun dia pergi ke. Uh, dia akan jadi dalam bentuk carbon. Dia, dia memang carbon dah. Dia dah habis dah. Dia memang dah. Carbon kan uh, basic punya material kan. Hmm. Cuma size dia lah kan. Mungkin... Uh, Contoh graphene sheet besar kan, so mungkin dia boleh Besar tu, besar dari segi nano lah, mungkin size dia 100 nano Then dia boleh decompose into smaller sizes like 1 nano punya uh, one, 1 nanometer square ha, macam tu kan ha. Trisha Kumaran ask, is nanotechnology cosmetics more safer compared to no normal cosmetics? Uh, the pens. <laughs> uh, okay, dekat Malaysia pun actually ada banyak. Um, you, kalau you tengok some company yang declare dia punya sample adalah nano gold punya. Ada nano gold. Dia kata kan. So, uh, so far safe. Tapi kita juga ada buat test. On, uh, kita juga ada project on uh, nano safety yang kita select Uh, semua produk yang ada kat Malaysia ni uh, semua, Bukanlah kita select, kita invite untuk semua manufacturer Ataupun seller dekat Malaysia yang jual produk berkaitan nano, uh, nano Yang ada declare nano Untuk hantar ke kita dan kita akan buat testing Yang saya mention tadi tu, toxicology test Lepas tu ada juga buat uh, uh, Ada test uh, Nak tengok dia selamat ke tak digunakan kat atas orang 
dan juga ke ke alam sekitar sekiranya ada kesan dan kita akan kita akan uh, publish lah benda tu but then uh, apa yang ada dekat market sekarang ni kita rasa dia selamat lah sebab dia pun dah jalankan dia punya test sendiri kan macam tu kan cuma kita kat sini uh, kita bantu untuk confirmkan lagi lah tentang dia punya safety tu This question is from Daniel Hakim bin Kamal Aswa. Do you think that nanotechnology field can give us a wide job opportunity? Ah uh, boleh insyaallah. <laughs> boleh ada banyak ada banyak ruang especially dekat universiti pun banyak banyak uh, research study yang buat on nano. Okay, next one. Pravin Sivaraja asked if nanotechnology is becoming a must in our life, why is the nanobots are being emphasized in Malaysia? Um, I think uh, belum sampai masa kot ini. <laughs> mungkin tak ada lagi lah, tak ada lagi expert yang nanti. So mungkin Pravin boleh jadi expert dalam nanobots nanti. Siapa tahu kan? This question is from Sharpat Menon. What do you do when you work from home as a nano scientist? Ah uh, buat masa ni ah uh, banyak buat report je. <laughs> Sebab Visa is doing uh, apa nama analysis of uh, materials macam dekat TEM tadi. I also uh, involved as an uh, assessor in industry 4.0. So uh, apa um, I was assigned to go to companies before before the before this two weeks punya lockdown lah kan so kita ada pergi few companies untuk buat um, assessment on industry 4 and then so sekarang kita buat report lah hmm. uh, This is from Evil Twin can we make food with nanotechnology if yes what are some examples Uh, food tak pasti sebab tadi Angga Sesha tu application dia adalah untuk dia punya packaging dan juga uh, dari segi agriculture untuk food tu tak tak sure lah hmm, tapi mungkin ada juga yang buat entry antimicrobial antimicrobial setakat ni antimicrobial untuk packaging food saja yang menggunakan te teknologi nano ni hmm. Thank you doctor for clearing our doubts. Now I'll pass the stage to Shamita. A huge thanks to our speaker Mrs. Fazira and the moderator Muttini for the wonderful webinar. Now please all participants kindly turn on your camera for the photography session. Sekarang semua hadirin diminta buka kamera anda untuk sesi fotografi. Dear participants, please click the link in the chat box or scan the QR code to answer an attendance form and claim your certificates. Para hadirin sekalian, 
sila tekan link dalam chat box atau scan kod QR untuk menjawab borang kehadiran dan menerima sijil penyertaan anda. Dear participants, please click the link in the chat box or scan the QR code to answer an attendance form and claim your certificates. Para hadirin sekalian, sila tekan chat box atau scan code QR untuk menjawab borang kehadiran dan menerima sijil penyertaan anda. Once again, thank you all for attending the Kami Talk Series 3. There will be Kami Talk Series 4 from Waste to Fuel at 3 p.m. today. Hope to see you again soon. Till then, stay safe and stay home. Today's webinar has come to an end. Participants are allowed to leave the meeting. Thank you. Majlis hari ini sudah pun bersurai. Hadirin dibenarkan untuk meninggalkan majlis sekarang. Terima kasih.